Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. This is, I'm calling it my bee box. And I'm calling it my bee box because it is modelled on a Burt's Bees box. So you can see what I've done here. I've copied this bit up here slightly differently. But I want to show you how to make it. Now, the box is very easy to score and it's very easy to fold in one direction. But to get it folding in this direction, you have to manipulate your cardstock. So, OK, you need a piece of cardstock that is 11 by 6. I use soft suede with this one because the English um, garden paper has got beautiful bees in and it's soft suede. But I'm going with the Hello Honey this time. And, oh, bump the tripod. So 11 by 6 inches, 28 by 15 centimetres. We're going to score on the long side first. And you score it at one and three quarters of an inch. I'll give you the imperial first, then the metric. And description bar below, that's where you'll find the link to this project. So one and three quarters, three and a half, five and a quarter, seven, eight and three quarters, and ten and a half inches. And in metric, you're going to score it at four and a half, nine, thirteen and a half, eighteen. 22 and a half and 27 centimetres. Turn it round and score it at two inches and four inches, which is five and ten centimetres. Couldn't think then. And then bring it back to the original size because I want to put in markings where we're going to do these score lines here. So I want to put markings in across here. And the easiest way to do it is you'd put a little little dot or a little push with you know a little bit of pressure with your scoring stylus um, again I'm going to give you the imperial first so seven eighths of an inch and I've just hopefully you can see that I've just made a little divot there so seven eighths of an inch two and five eighths of an inch and the light is I'm just going to, have to move this because the sunlight is reflecting straight on here two and five eighths four and three eighths six and one eighth seven and seven eighths and nine and five eighths and in metric you're going to do these i'm sorry it's going to be funny lines 2.25 6.75 11.25 15.75 20 20.25 and 24.75 and like i say please don't panic go to my blog there is a direct link to this a link directly to this project in the description bar so you don't have to write everything down okay so Oh, I've lost my ruler. There it is. These lines here, these little dots we've just created at the top. If I tilt it, the, there's some line, light. We're going to join that up in a diagonal from there to there to the corner points here. There's a corner point there, so you're going to line it up like that and then to the matching one. It'll be easier. It'll make sense when I've shown you. So... the computer so can you see that so I've gone from point to point and you just keep doing it go all the way along and it's obviously it's a hexagonal box by the fact that it's got six sides it's quite funny I, I write down measurements when I'm working on projects and so that I have you know as I design something I have all the build and I was looking at, at my sample version of this, which was just done in some scrap cardstock, and going, yeah, 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 okay, I'll make that one. I made it ages ago. Got out my book of um, directions. Didn't particularly look at the title, or rather I did, and didn't take in the fact that it said octagonal until I'd done all the score lines and thought, well, that's not what I thought I was making. <laughs> so it's a hexagonal box. Okay, so now you can see the score lines that I've created. What we're going to do is we're going to fold and burnish all of the straight ones, so ignore those diagonal ones at the moment. Burnish all the way along. Okay. And we're going to ignore these ones for the minute. And I'm going to explain why after we put it together. So there's one small piece to remove, which is this bottom one here. So not next to your diagonal lines, it's the other one um, opposite it. And then cut up the other remaining score lines there. The finished dimensions of this box is 
three by three by two inches to that part. So it's three inches there, there, and two inches to there, or four inches all the way to the very top. So that's going to give you an idea of what you can fit inside. So that's seven and a half by seven and a half by five centimetres to there, or ten centimetres to there. Okay, let's get our little panels on. So I kept the same bee paper, because I thought it was really sweet. I love it. So pretty, but obviously I've got a different cardstock in the background. And these measure one and three quarters by one and a half set inches, which is four by four and a half centimetres. And they all just run along the centre panel. So, a little bit of snail on each of those. I love this paper. It's made me very happy, this paper. I was very sad to say goodbye to Painted Blooms. I can handle that pain a little better because of this paper. <laughs> Aren't I soft? I'm not the only person who's been like that, I know. So I'm putting my little buzzy bees all over. Okay, all six minutes. I decided not to do any stamping with this project because I figured it's going to take so long to put it together, or comparatively, but I decided not to do any stamping. Okay, so I'm going to run some adhesive down there, so I've got the new tear tape. I've been calling it tear and tape, or tearable tape. So that's not terrible, it's not awful stuff, tearable, <laughs> which I can't now rip. Okay, and it does peel very easily, um, however I've got thickly painted nails so it doesn't peel very easily for me. Okay. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to stick all of these pieces down and I'm going to use Tombow for this because I just want a little bit of slip. So this one here where my seam, those two, either one of those is going to be your, your back and your front so leave one of them to last. So little bit of Tombow on there and if I get exactly where you can see you can position it exactly right and then if you come along and do the same with one of these other pieces it holds itself and I use Tombow because I want to be able to move it about a bit Okay, and then the last one is going to be this one here. I'm just going to grab my bone folder so I can push in and make sure everything has stuck. Okay, now with a hexagonal box, I haven't manipulated any of these score lines. Your instinct is going to be to do that. To push it in and have these the the diagonal score lines go in and that's okay that's not an unattractive box and it's one you will have seen me make other people make but your finish is that which is not the same as that can you see you've got the bits pointing out I want them pointing in so the bit that you need to push and manipulate is the vertical line. So where you're following this score line here, this one here is sticking out. We want to flip it and push it in. And you need to let the cardstock know who's boss. So if you're gentle but firm, it will do that. And you just keep going around. So you're swapping it from pushing out to pushing in. And so I've got my thumbs roughly under there on my thumb. I have one thumb on each hand. And you just keep doing it all the way round. I like to say that the first version, not unattractive, it's a box I've made before. Um, oh, I've got the extra bit of cardstock on this side. There we go. And so, you then get that shape, which is that shape. Okay, 
so it's simple you're just swapping how that scored line is going to go so now I well now I just need to seal it all off and get my um, holes in so pinch it so you've got a, a bit sticking out a handheld punch which I've just gone off to one side and you pin you're punching a hole at about this mark so And again, just keep coming round, all the way round. You can see, now see why I wasn't going to do any stamping, because this box, oh look, I just put a hole in there. Wasn't concentrating. This box is going to take a bit longer to put together. That's okay, some boxes are, it's okay to put some boxes together and have them take time. the wrong way up. Okay, so they're all done. It's now looking a little bit... I'm not happy. So I've got, I've got my um, needle here because there's no way you want to watch me fight ribbon and small holes for the next three hours. Just looking for the back. There's the back, so I'm going to start on the opposite side and you're just stitching basically, so just in and out, in and out. I'm going with seam binding ribbon because although it's a thick ribbon, it's quite, um, it's, a, it's a wide ribbon is what I mean. It's actually thin, so it, it stitches quite nicely. And just keep going in and out, in and out. And it's so worth it. It's such a prettily finished, pretty shaped box. Um, I've clearly pulled off far too much seam binding ribbon there. Oopsie daisy. So last one, so I can get rid of the needle before I do myself an injury. And just pull. And it will gently, as you pull and guide where necessary, it will pull together. Goodness sake, my fingers, fumbly fingers, aren't I? Tie a bow. Chop off the excess. And that is it. That is the box made with vertical ribbon. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? So it's worth it. It's been worth 13 minutes of my waffle, hasn't it? I'm sure it has. But it's really sweet and I'm very happy with it. So I wanted to show you that, that you do one set of score lines and you would get it, you know, so that these parts were sticking out, but then just manipulate the cardstock and they're going to stick in like that. So definitely modelled on my Burt's Bees box. Hope you like it. Thank you ever so much for joining me and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.